Hi everyone, I'm here again to show you how to use vector embeddings and do some database retrieval in order to ground the LLM like ChatGPT in some facts so that you can do question answering based on some documents. And also this helps to prevent the well-known problem of hallucinations in LLMs because there's some background data for the LLMs to use to generate. So let us see how to do this. Firstly, I use the notebook called the Pinecone Vector Database Notebook. This is the example notebook, GPT-4 Retrieval Augmentation. Okay, this is actually a collaboration between OpenAI and Pinecone. The notebook doesn't really give you everything correctly. There's some code that is missing. So I actually help to augment it and do my own stuff as well. So I'll be running through how the code works. Firstly, let us download all the relevant modules. So you can see over here, these are the modules we need. Tick token, OpenAI, Langchain, Pinecone. All right, so let's skip this step. Next, we will download this thing called the Langchain documentation. You can download anything you want, actually. This will be the grounding for this notebook. So you use this document in order to ground the answers that the LLM will use to answer. So this document is actually this welcome to Langchain and all of the relevant HTML files about Langchain. So we are basically building a Langchain answering box that will answer you questions regarding Langchain. So cool, right? So this step takes a while, like about one minute. So I already ran it. Let's skip this. After you have run this, we can see that we have all the HTML already loaded into some text file. Next up, we'll use this uh, Langchain document loader. So we can look over here. This read the docs is actually a function provided by Langchain that enables you to read certain documents. Like for example, this reads HTMLs, All right? You can also use stuff like this PDF loader, okay? Because this will then be able to converse with academic papers or PDFs. And you basically make the document in some text form so that the GPT can process it. So let's basically run this. Okay, I think we can run this read the docs loader. Okay, so you can see now we are doing the processing of our downloaded documents. Okay. And after we have run this, we can then see what are the kinds of documents that are created in the text form. So let's just go to the documents while this code is running. So like doc zero is like, this page is a blank page. Yeah, after that, the next page is like, this is by enabling tracing and your Langchain runs. Yeah, you can see stuff like this. This These are things of a particular web page. And we can even see the page content like that. So like you can use this to see what are the different page contents over here. Right, so actually we have loaded finish already. So let's go back here and just run this. You can see what I'm saying is, is the same. These are basically how we view the HTML files. Okay, after using read the docs. So this is quite cool. You can actually read the entire page content as well like that. So the original read the docs come up with many other things like page content and like there's other fields like metadata, which we will use later. But you can just see like how this is interpreted by the read the docs. Okay, they use something like beautiful soup to take away the HTML text so that you only get back the text of the web page. Cool stuff. So let's see the source. So the source is like which website it came from. Over here is like this doc, this Python Langchain robots.txt. We just replace it with HTTPS. Okay, let's just see uh, where did this come from. Okay, so, so we can see like, oh, we have been blocked. All right. So I guess we are not allowed to see this directly. Okay, but we can retrieve it using the um, using the read the docs function. So next up, okay, what we'll do is we'll pass everything that we have retrieved into two fields. One field is text and one field is URL, All right? So we have a total of four, seven, five different web pages that we have, um, we have done. Right? And this basically gives us like for each web page, what is the text and what is the URL. Next up, what we'll do is we'll then use Tick Token, which is OpenAI's embedder or basically tokenizer. And this will basically create tokens from whatever you have. So let us use this thing called the recursive character text splitter, which will split the web pages into chunks of 400 tokens each with a chunk overlap of 20. So you can see that this is the function here. It's called the recursive character text splitter. And what they will do is basically create chunks of X number of tokens that you specify here with a specific chunk overlap. And this will go on until you reach the end of the document specified by one of these delimiters over here. So we can see more of like what are the chunks created. We can just run this. This is very fast. 
It's super fast. It just creates the chunks based on the data that we have, which is like the text and the URL views. So we can see that from 495 chunks, sorry, 475 data chunks, we get now 2922 because we split them into now tokens of at most 100 tokens each, chunks of at most 100 tokens each. So one of the chunks is like this. You can see this is the text and the URL like that. Okay, the next chunk that we split by over here, we can see that this is definitely less than 400 tokens, but we have reached the end of the document already. That's why this is the end of that chunk. Okay, and also we have a URL over here. So we can see that we have four different chunks. I just want to illustrate something about factor similarity here. Look at chunks zero and chunks one. These are more or less general kind of illustration of the lang chain. Like basically what happens if we click on the default session, we can see that we have no traces and so on. So same thing over here, we can see which of the nested traces in more detail. These are more generic stuff about lang chain. Over here, chunks 400 and 401, they are more talking about the code to do the wrapper around hugging face embedding models. So this part here is a bit more specific to this uh, hugging face embedding models. So what we will do is we will then use the embedding model. Over here, we have an open AI key, okay, which by right, you shouldn't show people, but I'm just showing you here to, see, to show you how to get it done. So these are the API keys. When you create a new key, all right, you will be given the key here, which you can then copy and paste over here. If you want to delete away, you can just delete away the keys here, which I'll be doing afterwards. So we'll be using this text embedding ADA002, which OpenAI says is about 90% cheaper than the earlier versions. So we use it. It's actually very cheap. Like, I think it's about less than two cents every time I, I run the embedding. So first up, we can create an embedding of the four chunks that we have here. And these are the different keys that we get from OpenAI. We can see that there are four chunks and each of the embedding spaces is 1536. Okay, right now, what we, I want to show you is how we can do the cosine similarity between the vectors. So the vector embeddings, okay, zero and one are the first chunk, zero and one chunks, and two and three are the 400 and 401 chunks. So we expect to see that the first two chunks will be more similar to each other, and indeed is closer to one, which means it's more similar. And same thing for here. While the cosine similarity between chunks that are not related are not as high as the chunks that are related. So this indeed checks out. Here we actually just use dot product for cosine similarity because the magnitude of the vector is one. Okay, for more details, I'll be actually having a separate video on this, on cosine similarity. But the idea is if the magnitude is one, okay, maybe I can just draw it here. Like if you have a cosine similarity between two, two vectors, it's actually given by this vector A, dot product vector B divided by the magnitude of A and magnitude of B. So this means that whatever we have over here, if the magnitude is one, we can actually just remove this base here and then the, the cosine similarity between vectors A and B would just be the dot product between the vectors if the magnitudes are equals to one. And the beauty of open AI embeddings is that the magnitude is equal to one, so we can do that. Okay, let's move on. So now we want to do this to upload all the embeddings we have for each of the chunks we have into Pinecone. So why Pinecone? Because Pinecone is actually an online hosting service which can actually help you retrieve the top K neighbors using approximate nearest neighbors, which is way faster than if you do this cosine similarity yourself. I mean, you can also implement approximate nearest neighbors yourself, no problem. But Pinecone is a, at least free if you just only have one project. So over here, we create the project and you can see that this is the API key and the environment that you use for your Pinecone. Of course, again, do not show this to people, but I'm just showing it to you, to, uh, to, to you here so that you can see this is the value and this is the environment that you copy and paste into your notebook. So we create the index over here. Actually, I already have run the code and I already have this index which contains all the different stuff that we need for our Langchain documentation. So this is the code in order to upload the embeddings we have created with OpenAI into Pinecone. So we have already ran this, run this, and now we can do retrieval. So this is the user query, maybe like how do I use LLM chain in Langchain? So let's run this. We use the OpenAI embedding to generate our embedding XQ, and then we use the index that we have in Pinecone in order to query the top K neighbors, like here we do five neighbors. You can see these are the neighbors that we have. 
And these neighbors are basically, like you can see over here, length chain interface for chains and so on. This gives you the text and the URL that is most similar to these chains. So it's quite cool because like here we have all the chain stuff already. So chains, you see all this have stuff that has chains in here. So it means the embedding space is more or less correct as we retrieve the right kind of vectors. So we then augment our query with all the text examples here. So in the example notebook, they only use the text. They did not use the URL. Okay, but I've augmented it with URL towards the end of the notebook. I'll show you this later. So these are the one, two, three, four, five, the five different chunks that we have retrieved using vector similarity. And this is the query. So now we prime the model saying that you are a question and answer board, answers user questions based on information provided by user above each question. If the information can't be found in information provided by user, you say, I don't know. So let's use the GPT 3.5 turbo. You can see this is the models that we have. So this is chat GPT. Of course, you can also use uh, other models. Here we use the chat completion API, which basically just does a chat kind of function with the user. You can then put like uh, some system message and some user message over here. So let's see what's the response for this. So we get this LangChain provides a standard interface for chains called LangChains. You can use it to sequence calls to an LM. And this is actually more or less correct. So this is quite cool because you can then use the augmented memory in order to ground the answer to be more truthful. So let's see how it does for a non-augmented query. Let's take a look at this over here. So for this non-augmented query, you see I don't have enough information. Okay, so let's take away the I don't know part because earlier on we say that if you don't know, you say don't know. So let's see what happens if we say we take the I don't know part away and we just replace it with you answer the user questions. So let's see what happens. And we can see that what, okay, so for all this, whenever I run each query is about like two cents. You can see the usage over here. I experimented with it just now. So I've used about 29 cents. So actually it's less than two cents. It's like 0 0.0002 cents. It's actually quite cheap to do this uh, embeddings. So they say that about 2000 document, 2000 web pages cost about $1. So um, just use it with caution, but I would say it's much cheaper than using the API for ChatGPT. Okay, so um, right now, this is what the ChatGPT gives us. Like over here, they have length coins and everything. So it's it's not, LM chain is blockchain. So it's, it's not exactly the chain that we are referring to here because this uses the ChatGPT innate knowledge, which may not be very well tuned to the LM chain documents. So you can see this is not exactly the answer that we, we would like to. So let's go to see like how we can input the URL. So instead of just, oh, something wrong with this in rest matches. Okay, so what I need to do is I need to rerun the top part here again. I need to run this part here because the rest over here, unfortunately I'm using the same rest as, as below. So, Okay, we have run the rest thing already. Let's take a look at this. So let's run this and see the augmented query now. And you can see that the augmented query now contains the text and the URL for each of the uh, documentation that we have retrieved, the 400 token chunks, right? So I have augmented the primer. I will say, I say that you have received some background information in the format text URL. You have to answer by citing each part of the answer with the relevant URL in brackets at the end of each part. The format for answering each URL is like this. Answer from URL 1, answer from URL 2, and so on. Use at least two URLs if possible. So this is more or less uh, what's going to happen. So we run this. And then we see what message is generated. So it's not bad, you see. It provides an interface for chains and so on, and even gives the web page here. Just wonder whether I can use this web page because earlier on they say I've been blocked. So let's see whether this works out. Oh, you have been blocked. So yeah, but this came from one of the documentation. So let us uh, see whether I can do something else. Like recently I did a video on the React agent. So let's see whether I can like, how do I use the React agent in LangChain? Now let's try this. Okay, we embed it into the documentation, uh, in the embedding and retrieve the top K, the top five neighbors from PinePhone. We can see zero shot React. Okay, it looks like it's correct. Then over here, yeah, it looks like um, it might actually have the right kind of there's action and observation already. So there's some, some promise. So let's take a look at how this is over here. 
So let's see over here. Oh, where is it? Yeah, we need to do the augmented query context first. We do the augmented query. So this is what happens. This is the uh, first is the agent types. And we have some chains, chains, and yeah, length chain with memory and so on. Let's see what the model outputs. So the React Engine length chain used to determine which tool to use based solely on the tool's description. Not bad. Okay, so this is the uh, agent text that we have here. Okay, unfortunately, there's some limitations with this. I realize they don't really have like ways to get the entire code out, like how GPT-4 would do. Maybe it's because we only gave a token chunk of 400 tokens each chunk. Maybe if we increase the number of tokens each chunk, and if we don't cut off the code halfway, maybe it will be better. But you can see this is something similar to what the Bing search does already. You have the text and then you have some reference. All right, I hope this has been a good introduction to how to use vector embeddings in order to augment the LLMs. I think this is a very promising field and it's also used in use cases such as hugging GPT. And this indeed would be one of the game changers in the future. So do learn how to use this. All right, signing off. Bye.